In this video, we're going to use Unity and Bolt Visual Scripting to implement a player health system so there's a danger of getting hurt and dying. Let's begin. Shall we play a game? For this build, you're going to need to go ahead and set up the damaged macro that looks like this. Special note on this one, the input on this macro has a value input called damage, which is an integer value, and the default value does not have to be set. You're also going to need to add a couple new player variables, so clicking on your player game object and scrolling down to the bottom of the variables list, add one called player health. This is an integer. I went ahead and set mine to 8. You can set yours to whatever you want and add another one called dead. This is a boolean and go ahead and leave that set on false. Next, you're going to need to go ahead and set up two new animations, one called hurt that looks like this and one called death which looks like this. Once you get those animations made, it should drop them somewhere in your base layer. And I just went ahead and moved my Hurt here and Death right over here. Two things to note on this is that both of these have to have their loop time turned off. And anytime you transition from the any state to either one of these, the uh, can't transition to self needs to be unchecked. Neither one of these have an exit time that's just going to go straight into Hurt and straight into Death. Um, and the following transitions are what you're going to need. Uh, these are very simple. The any state to hurt is basically just a trigger, and uh, any state to death, the death is set to true. Now, we never have to leave the death mode, but we will leave the, the hurt mode, and you can set this up however you want. If I were to do this build again in the future, I would just try to take advantage of any state as much as I possibly could. But basically, the combat mode is set to false, uh, grounded is true, moving is false, sprinting is false, death is false. That's important because if you don't do that, then it's just going to leave the death animation and go back to idle. Um, the any state to sword idle is exactly the same as idle with the exception of combat is set to true. So let me just kind of give you a real quick look at what that looks like. Basically in regular mode, I just have an any state set up to idle. This does have an exit time of one. And uh, these are the following parameters that I had set up there. And the very same thing for combat mode, the any state is just moving to your sword idle. Very same setup with the exception of combat is actually set to true in combat mode. Okay, I'm going to move into the bolt side of things, and I will try to explain these macros in just a minute. I'm going to show you how to set them up first, and if you want an explanation, you can move forward in the video. Uh, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to go into your player state machine, and you're going to add three new states. Uh, just right-click, add a flow state, name one vulnerable. You're going to right-click that and hit toggle start. You want that to start in vulnerable mode whenever you start the game. And then uh, name one invulnerable and then name one dead. You're going to make a transition from vulnerable to invulnerable, invulnerable back to vulnerable, uh, and you're going to make a transition from vulnerable to death, and you never have to leave the death state. Once you're dead, you're dead. So um, going into vulnerable, uh, the, this, is the, this is the way you're going to set that up. It's going to be a custom event with an argument of one. Uh, I went ahead and had you set up the damage super unit, so just go ahead and drop it right here. Uh, make a make a little connection there and connect that argument to damage. Um, in invulnerable, uh, basically what you're going to do is you're going to use the on interstate. You're going to delete everything else and set the coroutine there because you are going to have a little delay uh, where it's going to hurt in, and I'll explain why in just a minute. Um, and then under the death state, you're going to want to go ahead and set up another coroutine on interstate. Set the animator bool death to true, uh, set the variable dead to true, and uh, have a little wait time there, and then you're gonna set the time scale to zero. Again, I'll explain why in just a minute. Moving from the transition of vulnerable to invulnerable, um, you're just gonna set it up what you see on your screen. Uh, you're gonna have a custom event there. You're gonna set the layer to invulnerable, set the color on the sprite renderer to whatever color you want. I just kind of picked a kind of like a pinkish color I did turn the alpha down just a little bit on that one and back to the uh, trigger transition and uh, leaving invulnerable going back to vulnerable I have hurt end as the custom event basically the same thing except for the layer is going to be set to player here um, and from vulnerable to dead uh, this is just really simple custom event to set up call it death and trigger the transition Okay, last thing you're gonna do is go to your player game object and add a new layer just by clicking add layer right there and uh, name it invulnerable. And once you get that done, you do not have to set the player to invulnerable. That is what's gonna be transitioning back and forth. 
I know I kind of covered this in the melee tutorial on the player controller, but I just want to very quickly explain how damage works in Unity. Basically, you have separate game objects where one game object is giving the damage and the other is receiving. So in this case, you have the player attacking the enemy. And what we're going to do today is we're going to flip the script and the enemy is going to be the one attacking the player. So the question is, how do we transfer the damage from the player game object to the enemy game object or vice versa? Well, we're actually going to be using custom events. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Okay, since this is a player controller, I'm not really going to go in-depth in the enemy portion of this for the enemy AI, but basically I just have a, a very simple enemy AI set up to where the enemy can attack the player, and under the enemy melee attack, it's kind of the same thing as the other one, uh, as the player, except for uh, my radius is set a little bigger on the enemy, and uh, whenever I attack, I'm grabbing a variable that I put on my enemy called attack damage, uh, it's an integer set to one, and what it's doing is it's transferring that over the custom event. It's saying whatever's caught in that uh, overlap circle, then it's going to attack the player, and it's going to carry that damage over into the player. Now, I went ahead and had you set up this in the vulnerable state that whenever it receives the damage, because that's what's being triggered by the enemy to the player, and it's saying, okay, trigger the custom event damage, that it's going to go into the damage super unit here, and then it's going to, um, as it comes in, it, it subtracts that damage, uh, for whatever the enemy's damage is. So if you have bigger enemies, the enemy attack would be much more, or whatever, um, that uh, you just subtract that damage from the player health. And they do need to both be set to integers, or you're going to have an issue there. But it just sets the player health to whatever the player health was, minus the damage. Uh, then it's going to check if the player is dead. Uh, and you do that by saying, hey, is the player uh, health equal, less than or equal to zero? And the reason you have this, uh, I should have included this a long time ago, but uh, basically it's just saying, you know, is it less than or equal to zero? Sometimes you may get hit by multiple things at once, and let's say it goes to negative one. We don't want it to get bugged out. We want it to uh, check and say, is it less than or equal to zero? If it is then uh, go to death state. If it's not, then trigger the hurt animation and go to the hurt state. So going uh, from our vulnerable state, which that will, whenever we take damage, it goes from uh, vulnerable. Uh, it sets the game objects layer to uh, invulnerable. And one of the things I, I did, I just made sure you, you're probably gonna need to do this too. Um, under physics 2D, under that invulnerable state, uh, you need to make sure that you're invulnerable and enemies cannot interact with each other. So make sure that that is unchecked. And after that is done, that it's what it's going to do is going to set the hurt uh, layer. Uh, it's going to set the player layer when it's just hurt to invulnerable state, so that it can't be attacked at all as long as it's in the invulnerable state. The reason you want that is because you might have lots of stuff hitting you, and you just kind of want maybe a half second, maybe a second to just kind of get out of there. It just kind of gives a little bit of forgiveness on the player. Uh, whoever's playing the game. So setting that to invulnerable state, setting the sprite renderer to a different color, just kind of let you know that, hey, it's being hurt. You, you do that with your animation. You can also do that with your color. Um, and going back here, so it triggers from vulnerable to invulnerable, goes into vulnerable. It has a half second delay before it goes back into vulnerable. Again, that is just giving you a little, little bit of time. So if you wanted to increase the time, you just do it right there. Increase it a little bit before it goes back into the vulnerable state. Then it's setting your layer on your ga player game object back to player so that now it can be heard again. Setting the sprite renderer color back to normal. And uh, so it's just going to keep going into this loop. Whenever uh, whenever it's hurt, if it's less than or equal to zero, well then, uh, you know, it's going to go into the death state. So when it goes into the death state, uh, basically right here is it triggers the death custom event. And it's setting the bull to zero. I'm sorry, the bull death to yes, so it's true. And then it's going to set time to zero. So it's setting the variable on the player game object to dead. It's going to wait half a second. That just gives us a little bit of time to get the whole animation, oh, I'm dead, out. And then it's going to set the time scale to zero. And um, the reason we're doing that is so that the game is frozen now. We don't want anything else to happen. Okay, you should now have the foundation for the player health system set up to where he can get hurt and die. In the next video, we're going to begin setting up our user interface so we'll know exactly how much health the player has before he dies. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Regardless, my name is Megahertz, and I'm out.